Yeah, Jerry, nurse practitioners say that agreement needed to write prescriptions, for instance, is a hurdle. And they say that getting rid of it could potentially help people who live in communities where doctors are harder to find. They had nowhere to go, and neither did we. Michelle Hall and Dallas Riley opened their own practice as nurse practitioners after the hospital they worked at closed. The pair say their practice in Columbia County has grown and helps thousands of people, but they're worried about what could happen if a doctor they have an agreement with hangs up the white coat. For us personally, the four primary care physicians that are in our community are all retirement age in their 70s or more, um, and they together combined, I think, have about eight to 10,000 patients. A bipartisan group of lawmakers is proposing that nurse practitioners should be allowed to practice independently without an agreement with a physician. Supporters point to the fact that more than two dozen other states have made the change. We're actually less competitive because nurse practitioners are getting their license in Pennsylvania and then they're going out of state to where it's where they have full practice. I've worked in a state where there's full practice and um, and the outcomes are the same if not better. Hall worries that communities, particularly in rural areas, could suffer if nurse practitioners won't be able to find local doctors to collaborate with. People will fall through the cracks. People will die. A legislation summary of this bill says that the collaborative agreement requirement would go away after 3,600 hours of a nurse practitioner collaborating with a physician. This bill does have some opposition, though, from the Pennsylvania Medical Society. They say there are safety concerns. In Harrisburg, Tom Lehman, WGAL News 8. Tom, thank you. Several state lawmakers launched the Pennsylvania Black Maternal Health Caucus today. Its goals address trends of black maternal mortality and morbidity and to pass legislation to change the trajectory of mental health outcomes in Pennsylvania. We will develop the policy solutions together to address a public health crisis where black mothers and birthing folks are dying at two times the rate of their white counterparts do the pregnancy complications before, during, and after birth. In the 2023-24 state budget, Governor Josh Shapiro allocated more than $2 million specifically for black maternal health. A piece of American history is now planted in Franklin County. A Liberty tree was planted at Chambers Fort Park off North Main Street in Chambersburg this afternoon. During the American Revolution, the Sons of Liberty gathered under historic trees throughout the colonies called Liberty Trees. The last known Liberty tree was destroyed by a hurricane in 1999, but a local landscaper rescued and revived parts of the original tree and now direct descendants of that Liberty tree are making their way across the nation. We look at these opportunities for planting these trees as ways to recognize the 250th for the next 50 years or 100 years for folks to really understand how historic these types of plantings and these trees are. America 250 PA's Liberty Tree Project plans to include a certified Liberty Tree planted in each of Pennsylvania's 67 counties. Franklin County is the second to have a Liberty Tree. America 250 PA is a group planning for the 250th anniversary of the founding of the United States. Boy, what a game yeah. last night. <laughs> Phillies fans, you know, you're hoping for a repeat tonight, I'm sure. Yeah, it wouldn't be bad to hit a home run the first <laughs> pitch of the game and then have another home run by the birthday boy there in the first yes. inning. That's a good way That'd to start the game. All right, well, Newsday's Pat Pritzby joins us live now from the field at Citizens Bank Park. I'd imagine the Bryce Harper birthday celebration still continuing out there even the day after. It, it, it probably is somewhere. I think he had a big cake, and they're still finishing that off right now as well. You know, the Phillies do have a great record. They've won every game one of every playoff series they've been in the last two years. However, their record in game twos not as good. And, you know, these Arizona Diamondbacks, they weren't expected to be here. They're kind of playing with house money right now. Kind of the role the Phillies had in the playoffs last year, and they wound up in the World Series. And, you know, if Arizona would steal game two tonight, home field advantage would shift back to the snakes because the next three games in this series are all in downtown Phoenix. So it remains to be seen if the Phillies can step on their throats here and take that 2 nothing lead. We'll hear from the Phillies coming up later in sports. Also hear from Penn State coach James Franklin and quarterback Drew Aller on the big matchup with Ohio State. And we see you in sports coming back in a few minutes. We're live with the Phillies at Citizens Bank Park.
Oh, I cannot wait, Pat, for yeah. this game tonight. It's going to be a good one. All right, we'll check in with you later. Hoping for a good score there. Absolutely looking forward to it. All right, how's the weather tonight out there, Jim? I think it looks pretty good. And I, when I got from Pat that Bryce Harper gets his cake and eats it, it too. Yeah, right? true. Yeah. Let's true. check that forecast out for the bank. It's looking okay. There are a few sprinkles out there. Could still be one or two, but I think it's just kind of a cool fall-like evening in the 50s. Uh, have the rest of our forecast which includes another wet weekend that's coming up. A News 8 viewer wanted to know if a letter she got about a video game settlement is real. I made on your side consumer investigator Brian Roach. I'll tell you if it's real or fake. And this little piggy, well, not so little, is on the run in Adams County. Why it is so hard to catch. You're watching WGAL News 8 at 6 with Jerry Gish, Lori Burkholder. And I think we've popped up just a little us. bit early, but there we are. <laughs> All right, well, News 8 viewer got an email about a refund, and she wants to know if it's legit. And on your side, consumer investigator Brian Roach has the answer. Folks, I've told you this before. Scammers try to capitalize on current events. They watch the news, too. So I'm glad a viewer reached out to me asking if this email is real. This is the letter that she got right here saying that she may be eligible for a refund after the Federal Trade Commission reached a settlement with Epic Games. That's the company behind the video game Fortnite. Yes, this is real. It is not a scam. And you can tell it's real because it is from the Fortnite refund administrator address. Fortnite refund at RC notifications. Dot com. These emails started going out September the 19th, and they've been going out in waves, so if you didn't get one yet, you may be wondering if you're eligible for a refund. Well, you may be eligible for some money if any of the following are true. One, you were charged in-game currency for items you did not want between January 2017 and September of 2022. Two, your child made charges to your credit card without your knowledge between January 2017 and November of 2018. Or three, your account was locked after you complained to your credit card company about the wrongful charges. There's a lot of information I just gave you here, so I just put a link on my Facebook page if you'd like to follow up. I'm Brian Roach on your side, WGAL News 8. Now, the WGAL News 8 Storm Team Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Joe Calhoun. Good deal of clouds, and they are producing a few sprinkles a little bit over the Lehigh Valley. Could head down toward the Phillies game, like I said, and a few up over the mountains. The story today is being a little cool. Temperatures are only in the 50s all across the board right now. Looking live in Lebanon, 56. 
kind of a pretty looking sky. There's some breaks in the clouds over the Lebanon Valley at this hour. Looking at temperatures 56 in Lebanon with a west wind at around seven miles an hour. So kind of cool. Could still be a passing sprinkle this evening. 50s, 40s overnight. We'll see some more clearing. Little chilly. Could be some valley fog. I don't expect it to be too widespread. Cold, partly sunny tomorrow. A little more sun than we had today. Still some clouds. But temperatures get in the low to mid 60s tomorrow. A little bit better than that 61 of today. That's two in a row at 61. It was after a morning low of 50. I think it's a little chillier for tomorrow morning. No precipitation officially. Cool air all the way down the spine of the Appalachians. Then it gets warmer out west. That cool air corresponds to a lot of clouds over the northeast. Storm is pulling away. High pressure is building in. And that should start to promote a little more clearing, especially as we get into tomorrow afternoon. And we stay a little clear tomorrow night. Could be a little chilly, just some patchy clouds. Here's our next weather maker. It's a front that's going to bring some rain, probably getting in here as we go into the day on Friday. But at least on Thursday, we're in the southerly flow of air. Despite more clouds, we should start to see more temperatures going up a little bit. So mid 60s, then near 70. So a pretty decent couple of days. Clouds come in, a few showers, not a washout on Friday, but unfortunately it is looking like Saturday. It could be a rainy kind of cooler day. Windy behind that system on Sunday into Monday, and then temperatures turn around as we head toward the end of next week. All right, Joe, thanks. You're looking live at Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia, where in less than two hours, the Phillies and the Diamondbacks face off in Game 2 of the National League Championship Series of Live Preview. Coming up next. Now, WGAL News 8 Sports, powered by Xfinity Mobile. All right, we told you last night that in their last two postseasons, the Phillies have won game one of every series they've played in, and that includes last night's game one of the NLCS. However, their record in game twos, other than their two wild card series wins, which were two game sweeps, their record in game twos, 0 and 4. 
A very aggressive approach at the plate paid off last night in game one. Kyle Schwarber and Bryce Harper both belting first pitch home runs that stuck the Phils to a quick lead. And you know, the key to dealing with a young, nothing to lose Diamondback squad, take away their hopes early and keep your foot on the gas. Everything's about momentum this time of year, you know? And, and these Arizona's really good at, at creating momentum and then keeping it. So that's one of the things we need to do is, is get momentum, keep it, don't let them back in the game. We just got to keep playing our game, worried about us, and uh, understand they're, they're not going to lay down. They're not going to do anything different. They're going to be the Arizona Diamondbacks like they have been all year. And we just got to play our game and understand that. Aaron Nola, Merrill Kelly, the game two pitchers tonight. We got first thoughts from Penn State on that mega matchup with Ohio State in 30 seconds. Uh, there's a little football game in Columbus this weekend that you may be aware of. Seventh-ranked Penn State taking on number three Ohio State. It's a game that will impact the Big Ten race and will also impact who gets to the college football playoffs. Now, Penn State last year had Ohio State right where they wanted them one year ago. They were on the verge of defeating the Buckeyes for just the second time in nine years, but they let a fourth-quarter lead slip away. Ohio State scored 28 fourth-quarter points. Now, so far.